Hi, I'm Robin Worley, and I've been publishing books and courses to help photographers with their photo editing for over 15 years. In this video, we're looking at the gradient map adjustment layer in Affinity Photo. It's one that doesn't get much attention, so I wanted to share some ideas that you may find helpful. First is using the gradient map to convert a colour image to black and white. Here's the starting image open in Affinity Photo, and we're in the default photo persona. This image has already been edited, and now we want to convert it to black and white. But rather than adding a black and white adjustment layer, we'll use the gradient map instead. You can add the gradient map by clicking the new layer icon at the bottom of the Layers Studio panel. Then in the pop-up list, click the gradient map option. This adds a gradient map layer as the top layer in the image, changing its colour. The way the gradient map works is to replace the colours in an image based on their tone or brightness. The strip in the dialog represents the tones in the image from black on the left to white on the right. The colours are then applied to the image based on the pixel's tone. If you look at the left of the strip you can see that it's red. Now look at the image when I hide and display the layer. You can then see that the darkest areas of the image are now appearing as red because of the gradient map. At the other end of the strip we see another marker which represents the bright areas of the image. At the moment we see those are coloured blue in the image. The rest of the image, the midtones, are then coloured green. But we don't need to use these default colours. We can click these circular marker points on the strip to select them. And once selected, we can see their colour displayed as a colour swatch, which we can then change. All we need to do is click the swatch to open the colour dialog. Now it is possible that your colour dialog won't look like mine. That's because of this drop down at the top. We can use this to change the control layout. I'm using the hue layout at the moment. This means that I can select a colour using the hue strip at the top. I can then control the lightness and the saturation within this coloured square. The point on the gradient map strip that I have selected is controlling the shadow tones in the image. So let's set that colour to be black rather than red. We can now see that the dark rocks in the image have changed from red to black. Next, let's click the white point on the gradient map. We can then click the colour swatch and set it to white. This then leaves only the green, which is affecting the image midtones. Let's click the swatch and change that to be a midtone grey. Now, if you want to make selecting a midtone very exact, we can switch to using the RGB control layout. We can then enter a value of 128 for each colour channel to produce a midtone grey. Also, if you switch back to the hue layout, we see the same midtone grey still set on the square. As you can see, our colour image has now been converted to black and white. But there's more we can do with the gradient map. It's also possible to use the layer like you would a curves layer to add contrast to the image. Watch what happens when we change the shade of grey that's attached to the midpoint on the gradient map. If we choose the lighter grey, the image becomes lighter and a darker grey makes the midtones darker. Let's add another point now, midway between the black and the midpoint. We can do this by clicking the black point to select it, and then clicking the insert button. This adds a point midway between the one that's selected, and the next point to the right of it. Let's do the same again, but this time we'll add the point between the midtone and the white point. We can then select and adjust these points like we did the others. We'll start with the shadow point first. Notice that when I select this, the grey tone in the swatch is taken from the colour on the gradient strip. We can then adjust this to make the shadows darker. Next, we can select the highlight point and then click the swatch for that. We'll use this to make it brighter. What we've just done is made the shadows darker and the highlights lighter which is all that a contrast adjustment does. Now let's look at a different example of using a gradient map. This time we'll use it for colour grading. I've chosen this image of street art I shot in Liverpool because it has plenty of different colours to help see the effect. 
This time we won't use the center point on the gradient map, only the black and white points. To delete a point from the gradient map, first click to select it. You can then click the delete button to remove that point. For this color grading, let's use a blue and orange. Start by selecting the black point and then using the color swatch in order to change its color to blue. We can then select the white point and in the color swatch, we'll set that to orange. It might also help you to know that we're using the points on the right side of the square in the color picker because we want to use more saturated colors. These will have a bigger effect on the color grading of the image. We can then adjust the opacity of the gradient map to help blend the effect and control its strength. A value of around 25% produces a reasonably good effect with this image. We can also though improve this effect by changing the layers blend mode. This is currently set to the default for new layers, which is normal. The most common advice for color grading with the gradient map is to use either the overlay or soft light blend modes. Now both of these work well with the overlay producing perhaps the strongest effect. But at lower layer opacity settings, most of these contrast enhancing blend modes will produce good effects. Another blend mode that I recommend trying though is Glow. This also produces a strong effect, but it works well with this image, especially at lower settings of the opacity. Something else to try when color grading is clicking the reverse button. This swaps the selected colors in the gradient map and produces quite often a very different look. And if you did this with the black and white example that we looked at earlier, it will produce a negative of the image. So far, we've only been using two colors for our color grading, which is a form of split toning. But watch what happens when we add a third point to the center of the gradient map. This now takes on the color that's midway along the gradient map, which in this example is a muddy brown color. Although we could change this to something more vibrant, it does have another use. By moving the point on the gradient map without changing its color, we can use it to balance our split toning. If we move it to the left, we'll make the oranges in the image more dominant. If we move it to the right, the blues of the shadows now become more dominant. What's happening is that the center point is now acting just like a color balance slider. This then allows us to set the point on the tonal range at which we switch between the two colors we're using. Now it's important to realize that the gradient map isn't the same thing as the gradient tool that's found in the tools palette. I've come across quite a few people who confuse the two. So if you want to understand what you can do with the gradient tool, watch this video next. Thanks for watching today and I hope I've given you some ideas about using the gradient map. Be sure to visit my website though for more tutorials, books and courses. I hope to see you soon for another video.